Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Now there's something about Star Wars' creative design that is just inherently approachable for the audience. Although it's a science fiction or fantasy franchise, there's something very timeless about the costumes, weapons, and vehicles. Everything looks advanced, but at the same time, familiar and believable. I think that's why it's one of the franchises that cosplayers like to immerse themselves in the most. George Lucas and Ralph McQuarrie did a wonderful job concepting what the Star Wars universe would look like and drew up some of the most iconic costume designs the world had ever seen. And John Molo, the head costume designer for Star Wars, executed those designs. Prior to working on Star Wars, Molo had never seen a science fiction movie. His jobs before this were all historical films, and his expertise was in military uniforms and equipment. Despite all this, he agreed to take on the job. The first thing George Lucas told him was that he didn't want to notice any of the costumes. And John Molo failed miserably at that. Not only did he win an Oscar for his efforts, many of his designs are now the most recognizable in the entire film industry. I think part of the reason his costumes turned out so well was because of Molo's deep understanding of military history. Most of the costumes that he put together were influenced or molded together by real life military gear. Which gives this fictional franchise a realism that made it relatable, especially to audiences that had never seen a sci-fi flick before. So today, we'll be looking at the uniforms of the Rebel Alliance and the real-life influences behind them. Now, I was never a big fan of the Alderanian Consular Security Force uniforms. Their lack of body armor and weirdly shaped helmets seemed a bit silly. But the decision to make them so ill-equipped was a carefully thought out one. It shows the audience that the Alderanians were a peaceful people, and their lack of armor drew a stark contrast against the faceless Stormtrooper Legion. After doing some research, I came across Andrew Ainsworth, one of the prop makers for the original trilogy. His shop still makes replica costumes for the fans, and they're the best. And on his YouTube channel, which I'll link down below, he shows us how he made some of the most iconic costumes ever. I was surprised to find out that the helmets the Rebels wore in the first scene were actually fabricated from molds made out of the iconic M1 helmets, first introduced by Americans during World War II and used well into the 80s. Actually, a lot of countries still use them today. Ainsworth would go on to make small modifications to the helmet by adding on little antennas and visors to create different looks. Now, when Gareth Edwards began concepting Rogue One with Disney, they wanted to make it the most visually realistic Star Wars movie ever. And so they began testing the vehicles and uniforms they were designing for the film by photoshopping them into actual war photos from the Middle East and Vietnam. And the results? Well, when I first saw Rogue One and saw all those rebel troopers piling out of that Huey, I mean, Ewing, I thought I was watching a Vietnam era film. It was awesome. I mean, look, the Ewing even had door gunners. Absolutely epic. We also got to see the return of the iconic M1 helmet from the Vietnam era. And instead of molding plastic on top of it, they literally just used the helmet and put a few small modifications on it. Most of the helmets had camouflage covers or nets and a small durasteel shield that gives the wearer a little bit more protection from headshots, which by the way was actually used in the trenches of World War I. And instead of a pack of cigarettes, there's what I can only assume is a pack of death sticks? Remember, this is a much grittier version of Star Wars, so the Rebels aren't exactly the nicest people. The fatigues many of the Rebels are wearing are almost identical to the Russian Speznat battle dress uniform called the Gorka 4. You can actually buy this on Amazon. Gotta love the internet. Many of the Rebels are also wearing Russian tactical assault vests, which is quite fitting. There's definitely a much more ragtag appearance to the Soviet-style equipment, which makes the Rebels feel more like Rebels. Some soldiers were also wearing what looks like an M69 flak vest, another Vietnam-era favorite. The flak vests were precursors to modern body armor and gave the wearer good protection from shrapnel, but were useless against bullets and probably blaster bolts. There are also a few rebels who wore floppy hats which are kind of similar to the ones Soviet tankers wore in Afghanistan. The rebel commandos have a very interesting donut shaped helmet. I say interesting because there's an actual donut helmet used by the Indian Army. Meet the Pakta helmet. Originally designed for Sikh soldiers who wear turbans, this impressive Kevlar-lined helmet can stop a 9mm round, and there have even been reported cases of it stopping AK-47 rounds shot from a distance. I'm assuming that guy got knocked out though. The only problem is the top of the helmet is left unprotected, which makes me wonder if the Rebel Commando's helmets have those same abilities. But what's really impressive about these helmets is that the Indian military has only just started using them, which kind of makes me think, in this case, did the Star Wars helmet inspire the real one? I'm glad Gareth Edwards and his creative team went with Vietnam era gear. I think had he used modern body armor and helmets, it would have been way too recognizable. 
And had he created new custom items like in The Force Awakens, they definitely wouldn't have had that heavy, realistic feel to them. Now, moving on to the Rebel Alliance pilots. Their uniforms drew from many different influences. The bright orange color of their flight suits is what NASA calls International Orange, a hue which was chosen for spacesuits because it stuck out and made it easier for search and rescue to find. It's also the same color as the Golden State Bridge, which is also hard to find early in the morning. And it wasn't just Americans who used this orange shade, cosmonauts did as well. It makes sense that the Rebel pilots would use this color, because they are actually astronauts if you think about it. And because Rebel ships had life support, Rebel pilots didn't have to wear completely sealed helmets. I'm also pretty sure that Lucas didn't want the faces of his heroes to be covered when they were making the trench run. The Rebel helmets are designed from the Vietnam era APH-6B pilot helmets, which were a standard issue for all Navy fighter pilots in the 1970s. They flew beauties like the F-4 Phantom, which like the X-Wing was extremely versatile and served as an interceptor fighter and occasional bomber. Well that's all we got for you guys today, next episode we'll cover the Empire's uniforms and armor, and uh, maybe we'll do the blasters as well, why not? Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on all of our awesome new content. Special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there. Don't forget to check the page every now and then, we upload a lot of our videos up there so you guys can have a sneak peek. Thanks for joining us today, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.